Um, it was only later when I was doing, like, reflecting on my life and, and really going deep on everything that I'd done that I could I felt was still with me and I hadn't let go of emotionally. And it, it soon became apparent that, yeah, he was... He was talking about ghosts, not external ghosts, my ghosts. Things that you've done in your past. The ghosts of my past would come back and haunt me. And, um, yeah, they did. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. Right, we can turn this. Jesus, man. <laughs> you guys aren't ready for this jumper. Jeez. <laughs> I don't even know what colour it's coming out. She's not ready. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast live and direct central London or central as you could be. And you don't need to be anywhere else. Trust me. Why would you? Huh? Huh? Uh, you'd be wasting your taxi fare. Get online. Check this out. Big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. I hold tight. Everybody would do. Television app. You know, hear me telling the television app all the time. It's a sporting art. It's a place where you get everything 24-7. Don't I mean 24-7? It's at your dial. You can get it. Mixes and the works. We are inside the ride with a gentleman. I guess he was the poster boy of his time. He was the uh, graffiti writer's graffiti writer. Um, of an age and uh, the pixelation does not do him justice Northern Line Don Gold is Green Hero yo you know if you don't know get to know can one inside the place how are we gent? very well thank you how was that for an intro? come on yeah I, yeah, I, I kind of always feel a little bit embarrassed when people like oh yeah you're this you're that yeah. I just see myself as a writer serves you right though You've done well. <laughs> you, got, you got busy. You got busy. Yeah, yeah. I, I did. I enjoyed it. I think that was the that was the important part for me. I think also as well that um, being a little kid at the time and age being so important at that time. Like if someone's a year older than you, mm. that's, that's that's a, a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it's a big difference. And so a lot of the writers were older, and we used to, you know we there were a lot of different ages there, but. Uh, the, you did tend to look up to the older writers. Mm. You know, they seem to get, I don't know, it's just it's just an age thing. You know, when you're younger, you look up to the older people, simple yeah, as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Mentors, isn't it? Mentors. Yeah, but on a kind of, on a level, not perhaps where that person's actually, you know, showing you what to do and things, but certain tags would stand out. Really? More than others. And it was, yeah, I was, I've talked to people about it recently and, it, and we were saying like, Certain tags, for whatever reason, seem to almost hold some sort of uh, charisma about them. Ooh, well, yeah. you, ju you just see that one tag and and almost ignore all the others. Why? Yeah, why is that? I don't why know. Is that? I don't know. I don't, is it the style of the letters? I just I don't know. I I, I just thought it was something worth pointing out because there are a lot of writers from when I was writing who just don't even get mentioned. Yeah, they do, and they were smashing it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. You know, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's interesting, isn't it? Because now you've got me thinking, like, I'd say, like, a Z and an F, these letters, without treating too geeky in the, in the piece. But, you know, those those letters have a kind of dip front. Right. And at either side, they're kind of like eyebrow frown, like evil. Right. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I guess there is an argument that some, yeah, some letters do lean to being a bit more aggressive looking and a bit more striking. Well, I think it was the start, just the the style itself of the tag. You know what, the flow in it really. Mm. You you know you be, you'd look at you'd well I would look at letters mm. and I'd be looking at the flow and that's what would attract me. That you could you could write your name, no problem, and you know, get up and everything. But just certain certain people had certain styles that stood out from others, and um, because of that. Perhaps they didn't even need to do as much as the other people. Yeah, yeah, it's, weird. Yeah, it's a weird one. Hey, that's a really interesting concept. Some people make work harder for themselves mm. <laughs> to, to, to keep attention on people. Yeah, you need. You know, you. I think you needed. You needed to have a certain style to stand out from the others. Mm. And I, you know, and, that, and that's what I was seeing. And yeah. I think you know, we, not just your tag as well. Your throw up needed to be on point. Um, it, it needed to be something about it that. 
just separated it a little bit from what other people were doing. Your uh, throw up, I just, I just have vivid memory of it as a young man, and that sea was crazy. Just the way it was, it looked evil, it looked, and and from what I understand, reasonably quick to pull off. It's like well, that's, I, yeah, I, I simply. I can remember sitting down and thinking I need to do a throw up. This is important. I'm going yards. I can keep bombing it with my tag, but it's not filling up the panel. Mm-hmm. So I need a throw up. And um, it was never meant to be evil. I don't look at it and see it as evil. I look <laughs> at it and see it as is a serious look on its face. Did have a serious look on its and face. It, and depending on my mood, it would change shape a little bit as well. So from that, just trying to work with it, what you know, trying to do a C in a you know in a, with a good flow to it as well, which I, that's what I was aiming for. But at the same time, I was like, it needs to be quick. I don't want to be standing there and it, you know stop start with the nozzle. Mm. So it's just one line on a dot. It's that's perfect. Simple as that. But but you know, some people can overthink things. This can be overthought. Uh, you know, I I see certain people's throw ups to begin with and by the end of it they've really simplified the shit down to like mm. that the, you know to find you of like this is actually how it's got to be because I can't ain't got time to do do it any other way yeah yeah and you could see there's there were writers who had just been doing their throw up for so long it wasn't it was it was beyond muscle memory mm. it was just just completely natural and it, you know you'd be hard pressed you'd have to try and keep up with them in the yard because Certain writers would be hitting all the best spots, mm. fronts of the trains, and then you come round to the front and all the fronts have been done, and you're like, what the fuck, man? There's no room. <laughs> it's interesting you say that. It really is, because in this day and age, I mean, I can tell the difference between, like, even the size of the nozzle and the way it's going round, you can see that someone's really done that a lot, do you know what I mean? And how Drax is a great example of that, where it's just like, Jesus, like, his tag just doesn't is relentless does not it feels so fluid right so consistent mm. well i think that when i went when i went and bought some paint recently and um the woman in the shop said to me she goes oh do you want any nozzles and i was thinking well you don't get nozzles with the cans come on really mm. and she goes no and i'm like am i not getting nozzles and she goes no you can buy this bag of, of different nozzles i was like yeah let's have some of that let's that, see yeah. what that's about and these aren't paint ones, these are all sorts. These are like going from skinny, skinny to super fat. So I was trying them all out and uh, I haven't done anything for over 30 years. So it was all a bit new again. 30 years. Over 30 years. Come on. Over 30 years. And uh, I'll just come round, you know what? I'm just happy if the nozzle doesn't block. It's just, it's, it, honestly, it's people, a lot of people just that. use stock caps. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm happy yeah. with them. I, I, I use the skinny caps, I didn't really like them. Use the fat caps, and I and I, mm. and I was like, oh man, I wish I had one of these back yeah. then. <laughs> Although it does blow out a lot of paint. Yeah, right? but I'm just got still get... fun, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was it was uh, all this pr- um, high and low pressure as well. I was just like unbelievable, Blew it, blowing me away. Mm. The level it's at now, not not just obviously the supplies and everything, but the graph itself. Some some of these pieces are like technically, I'm like yeah, these. They've got it locked down. Mm. Simple as that, mm. you know. So. And we're talking about, you know, a lot of this is in retrospect, but one one huge element to this particular podcast is the files. The files. Well, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't say I, I wouldn't say files. I was, I was chatting to Frey. A warning to you all. <laughs> the files are here. Tell a story. Well, I was chatting to Frey yesterday briefly and mentioned that I was coming on and I said to him, like, is there anything you can you think that's worth pointing out? And he goes, yeah, I'll get back to you. Mm-hmm. He goes, I'll, I'll speak to you in the morning. And half an hour later, I get a text message from him with with literally a list where I'm scrolling down the screen like... Never ending. This is a lot of topics, <laughs> man. I re- I, mm, okay. Man, but, big shout out Frey. He really pulled it out of yeah, the bag no, for you, yeah, man. Uh, do you know what? I have to say yeah, enough respect to Frey because when I come on Instagram it, this year, I've, and bearing in mind I've had no contact with Graf like, at all. No, no, anybody, not for like... I'd, I'd bump into people and have a chat. Because you do know, like, just so yeah. you're aware of this, like, I remember when we, we bumped into yeah. each other at Robbo's and it was just, I know you were kind of a little bit reluctant for these reasons, I know. It's actually 
People refer to you, man. Like people, you've got. Well, you I didn't see. I, I just don't. I, you should yeah, get. I, you do you know what? I, ju- I just roll with it. And that. And when I first, when I uh, bumped into you, that was the first time I'd, I'd actually thought, I'm going to go out and just see what this is all about. I'd been chatting to uh, Moz. Uh, Moz Groove, mm. and um, we said, Yeah, we'd link up. Big up, Moz. Yeah, he's, he was there as well. Yeah, he's yeah, a top up, man. Yeah, he's like, he's you know, just, guy. just a lovely guy. Mm. And uh, we just clicked, and um, I went down there, and I and I'd, I like to keep myself to myself a little bit. I'm, I'm more of a watcher, and if the time's right, then yeah, I'll, I'll come and talk. And um, you were standing there, as I, you rec- do. I recognized your face. Um, you chatting to a couple of other guys and um, one of you mentioned Yardies and I was just sitting on the bench and I just thought, well, you've come, I've come down here. I should at least make a little bit of an effort. Mm-hmm. And I, just, I remember I just went, yeah, I was in that crew. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah. what was m- the mad part of it was that I didn't recognise the two people you were chatting to and they were like, well, who are you? And I was like, mm. oh, I'm can. Which, which feels a bit weird anyway because mm. I haven't referred to myself as that for, you know, donkey's years. And um, it was school and her. Now, me and her used to mm. used to ride the lines mm. together a lot and I didn't even, just didn't recognise him. And then once he said, yeah, I'm her, I'm, I'm like, well, he said term first of all. And I've, I knew him from back then. He used to write for the, another writer, Blue. Blue and term were pretty big back on my end of the line anyway, mm-hmm. um, the, the north end. And, um, yeah, we got chatting and, it, yeah, it was just like, yeah, this it, it feels healthy, so let's just see where this goes. And I've spoke to them a couple of times since and um, linked them when um, PIC and Seika and um, what's the other guy? Xander. Yeah, Xander. Old tight um, gang. Had their thing at Camden. Yeah, the shutters. If you, I mean, you, you're not going to be there if you're watching it too late. But trust me, there's a mini doc there for you to check. Out yeah, that that was yeah, that was mad as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I bumped into them down there, and then, and just I just been bumping into people. Mia, like when I saw him, it was just like <laughs> type, Mia? crazy. You know, <laughs> just wow, man. I haven't seen these people for so long. You know, and a lot of these people, we was at the time. It, we were like a family. Do you know what I mean, a lot of writers, I would say back then, I spent more time with them than my actual family. Really? I got two two younger brothers, and one of them, my youngest brother, um, said to me, he goes, I never saw you. Really? I never saw him when I was a you teenager. Just I just out, constant. And uh, after, I, did, I must admit, when he told me, I did feel a little bit bad about it. Like, but I was, you know, you're at an age where I was caught up in something that literally took over my life. Mm. Like, and I mean, took over. People don't realise how much nah, it does. No, nah, not at all. It was... Uh, what yeah. do you think the components are for it to take over your life? Like, what are those core ingredients that make for a, a perfect storm? Um, well, I can't really speak for other people, but for me, it was the, it was the rebellious nature of it. You know, we, we can talk, you know, like, the art aspect and all of that, but for me it was, yeah, it was it was being a vandal, mm. just going out there and just smashing it. it. Just yeah. when I saw the trains in New York, the insides, and I was just like, yeah, that's what I want the underground to look like. That you know, <laughs> whether it did or didn't, I don't, I don't think it it got to that extreme, but that's the picture I had in my mind of that's what I want to see on the trains. Just, I want to see the trains destroyed mm. and um was it the americanized nature of it the fact that it was new york and no i don't think I think, of... I think it was just that, that i just liked that look i you know that we've got this now at the moment everything is this shiny new mm. you know every, it's all like sharp edges and clean cut mm. um but i like it raw mm simple as that yeah. I, I like that raw yeah, look. I, like, I like i like things that have got yeah. character to them yeah. and this, and all the all the new stuff like the new trains i can't i, I look at them and it's like yeah. yeah don't like them i like the old like grimy the you know when you when you're out in the, out on the line and it's filthy yeah. 
filthy. Mm. And I mean literally filthy, where you would blow your nose at the end of the day and it would be black shit I coming do out your nose. I remember that as well. Like, <laughs> it was a real, t- yeah. real talk. Creases in your jeans, black creases in your jeans mm. to the point where you couldn't even wash them out. And I, so anyway, I've, I've tried to think about, you know, what it was like back then as in trying to put myself back then rather mm. than just looking back. But what what I can remember of actually being there and um i can remember like seeing you you'd be out on the lines and be at stations and you'd you'd see those little mice running around on the track yeah yeah yeah, filthy they were but that's what we were like can i ask you talking of that my mouse thing like and i know this is really off off topic but we'd see them sometimes on the on the Underground, you'd be standing there waiting for the train, you see them buzz past. Mm. When you're in the tubes, you must see fucking loads of them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're just normalised. Really? You yeah, just get used yeah. to it? Yeah, yeah. You and just rats see them. as well? Uh, or mice. Not really rats. It was more... It, uh, you might see a couple of rats around the yard or something, mm. but it was those little mice, just those little mice. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and they, yeah, I felt like one of those. I was a little kid. Like, I was young, <laughs> Um I was the young, youngest in my year at school. That's why I was. Talk, well, I mentioned the age thing. Mm. I was the youngest. If I was born one day later, I'd have been the eldest in the next year. But I was the youngest, and so was. Me too. I know that one. Yeah. So I was. You know. Oh, and because of that, like my whole school life, I was always the youngest, and that kind of just. That's how I felt. I always just felt like a, the youngest, mm. and um, <laughs> yeah. Just a little kid, man. I was tiny as well. I got. I actually bumped into a couple of other writers recently. Like I was chatting to Saker, and he sent me a picture. The bus one had sent him of um, there. This wow. this is like, um, you know, eighty six, eighty seven, mm. and um, I was bopping around with them lot, like shoe two, mm. chrome, bus, noise, uh, um, Mel. And um, there was an, there was, uh, they were telling me it was one of the first illegal raves, like warehouse raves in London. And, that, well, and that, somehow or other they got asked to do the backdrop for it. And I'd gone up there with them and, he, and they sent me a picture and I was just like... That must have blown your I'm mind. I'm like a little kid, man. Really? I look about 10 years old. Really? So, like, literally, I was, I was tiny. And even Bus was like, yeah, little can. And I'm like, yeah... I can understand I that. Now, I was yeah. t- I was a really small kid. I didn't gr- start growing until I was about eighteen. Really? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at the screen now and I'm thinking, "Geez, I look mm. huge, man!" <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh, you do look cool. a lot bigger than me. I thought, "Well, you sitting on a cushion or something?" No, no. no. Oh, I'll, just I'll, a bit, I'll sit up a bit. It's and, a bit, you know. a bit more like <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Well, not that the pixelation that makes no difference. Yeah, you just get these more yeah, squares yeah. going up here now. But yeah, uh, well, we do have these documentations ready to explain more, and I might just add as well. Yeah. Um, they're all in kind of broken down uh, shorthand, I would guess. Yeah. Because um, obviously we want to try and cover as much of what you can remember. Yeah. And the insights, I'm pretty sure, will, will be quite, I don't know. As I'm, as we're talking, there's going to be a lot of triggery moments where you're like, oh, that, that, and you'll yeah. have to remember shit. Yeah. Well, I guess kind of, I suppose just a, a quick rundown of like, you know, how I got into it, mm-hmm. first of all. Oh, actually, before we say mm-hmm. anything. Because you don't live in London anymore. No. And I know after a while, London cities, it all just becomes all consuming. And, mm. then, and you have to start asking yourself what the fuck's all about. What am mm. I here for? You know, Tizer once said to me, big up Tizer, um, uh, the city doesn't need you. It keeps on replenishing. Yeah. And so you've got to add your worth. Your, your worth. And I, I'm presuming that by you moving out there was a there was it was there was a cert, there were certain signals that that were in the well, air. I was never going to leave London as far as I was concerned I was a Londoner born and bred and that was it why would I want to leave London it's mm. got, it had everything and um I always thought like that I always thought I'm, there's no point why do I want to leave London for I, I knew what was going on outside London but it didn't have the same attraction and um there's just got to that point where I must have been about 35 and I was going through a period where I knew I had to do something different. I was, I'd was i got myself into a situation that I had to remove myself from. 
Mm. Uh, it, it was the only way I could. There was, there wasn't an escape for me any other way, and mm. uh, I did need to escape. And I wouldn't say running away escape. It was just that it was a new chapter in my life that needed to happen, and um, I thought, yeah, well, why not? Yeah. Let's give it a go. Was you know, I, I wasn't going out. I was going to work, coming home. Everything was normal, yeah. And so, look, you know, I'm shutting my front door. Well, I'm shutting my front door. I can be anywhere and do that. I feel you know, you. I've, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy at home. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a homeboy. <laughs> I'm feeling that more um, since the lockdown. I think yeah. since lockdown of 2020, mm. to 2020, 2019 to 2020, which happened for whatever time you're watching this. And uh, yeah, since then. Of course, there are activities and things going on, but, but I'll, I'll just say at this point in time, Can, you're not missing a great deal. It really is a case of... I still come to London for work. Oh, do you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. So, I'm, so I kind of got the best of both worlds. Yeah, 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 yeah in a good place. So, I, you know, because of that, I, get, I, I still get to be in London, but I must admit, when I'm on the train home, I do like the... As we start coming out and, this, and the green fields yeah, start yeah. appearing, I do. Oh, I, I, you know, I, I really do. I, when I was younger, I liked the concrete. Mm. I liked the, the jungle aspect of it, you mm. know, just mismatch and all of that. Whereas now, I'm older now, mm. and and it's just a, it's just another chapter in my life. You know, I don't. Who knows what's going to happen? I don't know. Mm. I know that what where where I am now works for me very well, mm. and I'm. I'm married. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I've been with my wife 31 years tomorrow. 30, what? <laughs> Yo, well, it ain't tomorrow when you watch this, but <laughs> yeah. congratulations. Thanks and, very and much. congrats to your lovely lady wife. I guess there's a sentiment here that maybe we, sh we should amplify a little bit. And it's like, if you're going through some shit, there is normality on the other side and that everything that you deserve and want in your life, everyone is entitled to you just got to work for it. Yeah, I think, you know, you set your goals, you know, of what you're hoping to achieve. And um, I followed that line, you know. What my mum was telling me when I was about 18, I have to get a job. You, you're getting into too much trouble now. And this was like a little bit after graph as well. And I was getting in more trouble after graph, far more than I was when I was writing. Um and she was like, you need to get a job. You need some stability. You're at an age now where if you don't, you're going to prison. Mm. You know, it, it, it would have been inevitable. And, and without going into too much detail, I was pretty much at that point where you couldn't have been cr closer to going to prison. Really? Yeah. And it was so I was like, okay, I'll get a job. Got a job. And um, after, I quite liked it. I have to say, I, I, you know. What I, was the job? Printing. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I did a, I did some a stint in industrial printing. It it's all right. It's very yeah. I, rewarding. I've, I've always been a creative person and, and and liked you know just the art aspect of things and uh, that it seemed to fit in and um, I quite liked having regular money in my pocket mm. to be honest mm -hmm. rather than the you know one day you're skin another day you you yeah, ain't. I've heard about this regular money thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, it sounds good. <laughs> well, then, and then, of course, you know, that I kind of fell into a little bit of a trap because of that as well. Because you, you know, you, you get used to having that regular money, and then, and then you, you've got this pressure of you need to make money. It's all, you know, money is success and all mm. of that. And um, I got to a stage where I was earning reasonable money, and um, I felt worse for it. Really, I have to say, yeah, but I, it wasn't. It wasn't doing it for me. I just reaching a point where, you know, gradually over the course of years, just reaching a point where I generally just didn't have any zest for life. <sighs> I felt quite broken. So dragged you down. Yeah, I think I'd I'd done what we, I'd done what we're told to do, you know, mm -hmm. and. Um, it just didn't work for me. I did, and I realised that the only person who could get me out of this was me. You know, I, I went through tough periods of uh, having to deal with it, like on a mental level. And, you know, that it was what was weird was it was, it was such a personal thing that what I was going through, I, it was even hard to explain to people. 
And uh, anyway, they they decided that I needed to go and see someone um, and, you know, a consultant and speak to them. And um, it was just a complete waste of time because I kind of liken it to, I, li- I kind of like to m- make things simple when, when you're explaining things. And it, so I'll go to see this guy. I've been in, I've got myself into a situation and it was just quite simple. Well, you, you have to go and see a consultant. And I'm just going to call him a consultant because, you know, mm. in the medical terms and all of that, these people, you know, they can call themselves doctors if they want. It's no problem. But I would see them more as a consultant. So I'm chatting to this guy and I'm explaining, you know, what what I'm going, what I was going through and my thought process and everything. And uh, he was absolutely no help whatsoever. Um, and I just was like, this is just pointless. What? Mm. what this is down to me it's now. Achieve, yeah. yeah, and um, so going back to what I was saying, like you know, how, so people can understand what I'm saying. It's like imagine you go, you you go, you want to bake a cake, right? And then someone says, right, you need to go and see this person to bake a cake. And you're like, okay, cool. So you go, you go, and the guy says, right, this is what you need to do. Here's the recipe. Blah 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 blah. And you're like, okay. So. Um, what are your cakes like? He's like, oh, no, I've never baked a cake. Yo. <laughs> so and you're true. like, well, if you haven't been through it, <laughs> say it's how are you ever going to understand it? Yeah. And that's that whole part of the system, the the uh, mental health side, if you, you know, you got to speak to people who've been through it. How, to, how deep down did you go? Like how? A breaking point. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking like on the floor, fetal position, um, wailing, just completely broken like guttural you know you know like when you hear those noises that someone's making and it's like oh my god man if it's on tv or something it's it's uncomfortable Mm. that's the state i was in just properly broken i can't do this um but at the same time i would say being at that point and knowing that i needed help it was quite a, a fantastic moment at the same time, as well as, you know, that how bad it was for mm. me. That um, I, I can only explain it in the sense that when I was there, just broken, that, you know, like your grandparents, right, and they give you a hug. And it's, it's that kind of hug that it's not like your mum and dad's hug. And I'm not, you know, no, no, belittling your mum and dad, yeah, yeah, but your grandparents hug. Mm. It's just, it's just an unconditional thing. Something picked me up off the floor. That's the energy that picked me up off the floor. And I was like, do you know what? This is just unbelievable. It was, it was beyond the physical, mm-hmm. and it, and that was a, a massive moment for me um, because I could feel the energy there, and it was, it was real. Because it got me up, and I was like, "Okay, it's cool. I can deal with this." Was it a culmination of a lot of things that led you to this point? Um, do you know what? I think I think Graf did play a part in it. But you know, to be honest, I think you know, having lived lived that period in the eighties of just it was just amazing, mm. but not amazing as in you know. Bright lights, big city, wonderful time. There was a lot of dark aspects to it too. It wasn't just like going out and bombing. You you had to be careful. Mm. And um, I took it seriously, you know, when I was writing. And uh, obviously there's a buzz to it. And, um, you know, that, that's attractive. Mm. But I couldn't fill that hole in my life when I stopped writing. And I stopped writing because I just weren't enjoying it. It was one day um, I just decided I'm not doing this anymore. Mm-hmm. And, I'd, and I'd never been caught. Mm-hmm. I'd, ne- I, I'd always been on my guard and, and always tried to uh, pay attention. And, fi- and it was a real thing for me of I don't want to get caught. This is part of the thing. I don't want to get caught. I want to try and last as long as I can. Mm-hmm. And when I got to that point where I wasn't enjoying it, that's when I got nicked. What, be- what, what part of it didn't... You enjoy because I am, and I'm just saying at this point, there's probably a lot of people out there right now that are relating and just uh, nodding their heads in agreement. But what what elements weren't you feeling? Like what got to the point where it was like became passe or? Not I can't interesting? pinpoint it. I can't. You know, 
I, I realise now, looking back, because I spent a lot of time analysing myself so that I could understand myself. Who am I? Mm. Massive question. Biggest question. You know, life. like, and I've spent 20 years now doing that. Who am I? I want to I wanna know who I am and what I am doing here. And um, I, graph was my life, but again, like I say, looking back at it, my life has always tended to be I would give myself to something fully mm. and as soon as it, it, it loses its, you know, whatever, I'd, leave, I'd go and move on to something mm. else. I, I've always wanted to understand and learn things and, you know, and, and I only, only realised this when I started looking back at, like, in my life there's been periods of, like, let's say three or four years of doing something mm. and then I'd move on to something else. And try and the thing with graph was though that it was so fulfilling to trying to feel that it was it was impossible. I couldn't do it. I tried mm. I tried everything. I played a lot of football. I really threw myself into football, and I loved playing football. I loved the whole team aspect. It was similar to graph. You're dependent on other people as well, mm -hmm. and um, I I really enjoyed playing football. Mm. Great times, made some fantastic friends, but again, got to a point, I'm not enjoying this. Okay, stop doing it, move on. And um, that's what happened with Graf, I, I, could, I could feel that. And, and so one time I'd got talked into going yard, I didn't want to go, I, I, was, I knew I didn't want to go. And they were like, no, just come man, it's safe, you'll be, it's fine, nothing to worry about. And I and I let myself get talked into it. Um, so yeah, that's down to me. We were in the yard, and I think there was about six or seven of us. And um, next thing you know, flashlights everywhere, police everywhere, and um, jumping over fences. And you, there were a lot of police as well, like far more than I was, you know, thought there would wow, be. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm running down the road, and I know, and I knew that they were behind me. And as I've t as I've turned back round. They're all running towards me as well. And, I, and we're not talking two or three. There's about eight of them. And I, I remember they were in, um, I could see they were Met Police, not BTP, which, I've, which straight away I was like, okay, that's, this is that's cool. Else. But these lot are running towards me. There's two behind me. So I've just turned around and I was only small, but I was pretty fast. So I just dodged these two. Ran back down the alley <laughs> and then someone just kicked my back leg like hard. From the no, back, kicked yeah. from the back. And next thing I've just, bam, straight on the floor, face mashed into the concrete. And um, I remember thinking, I can't even be bothered to run. Mm. I, I just, I, for whatever reason, I just, I just didn't have it in me. Mm. I, I, any other time I would have done anything to get away and, and literally anything, I'd, you know, whatever was necessary. And um, got nicked, sat in the back of the car. Someone else got nicked. I was sitting in there. So I'd, I'd been nicked before a few times, but nothing had ever really come of it. So I was, I was used to it. I knew, yeah. I knew what was going to happen. So I was sitting there and I'm getting all the paint off my hands in the back of the car, get to the police station, no comment to everything. Police hate it when you do that, um, particularly when you're a little kid as well. And... Um, so, yeah, uh, I think my dad had to come to the station to pick me up. And um, they said, yeah, you got to come back. So I came back and I, I was with my mum and um, it was BTP were waiting. And I was like, oh, fuck. But at the same time, I knew they had nothing on me. They hadn't caught me writing anything. And uh, so I just stuck to my story. I knew it was it was a bit farcical, but uh, I just said I was I was in the alley having a piss, and next thing these police came out of uh, came out, and I just ran because I was scared. And um, BTP, you know they ain't they ain't stupid. And um, but I just I just thought I'm just sticking to my story. That I wouldn't wouldn't go beyond that. Any other questions? Was no comment. Um, well, that's the story. That is the story. What, what do you want? And by the way, at this point, I might add, do not try any of this stuff at home. No, no, no of course not. <laughs> it yeah. ain't for you if you're yeah. going to do. If you'd, have saw, if you'd have seen my face was mashed <laughs> down one side as well. 
And um, but BTP being BTP, bearing in mind that back then as well, just just to add, I never took photos of anything I did. It was it was yeah, no, it was a conscious decision gutted. as well. <laughs> I did, well, I didn't I didn't want to leave a trace. Mm. Um, big up Trace, yeah, old, touch, um, old mate of mine, known him <laughs> since I was four. <laughs> and uh, good good footnote like and, that. And um, so I did. Yeah, I had no photos. House had been raided as well. Didn't they didn't find anything. They found a pack of Rizla when they were raiding my house, and um, the policeman pulled out this pack of Rizla and waved it, and he was like, "Oh, what have we got here?" And I'm just looking and I'm thinking, "Well, I guess you don't quite understand that just because there's Rizla in someone's house doesn't mean anything, and you're not going to find anything else either because." I'm a kid, and if mm. I had something, it would have been in my pocket. Not, it wouldn't have been sitting mm. on the on the side. Yeah. And there was no, there was literally nothing in my house for them to find. Um, but so anyway, going going back, so I'm sitting there with my mum and the BTP are there, and um, on it had no photos, so everything was in my in my mind of of what I'd done. And BTP pull out a big folder and put it down in front of me, and it was a big folder. I'm really? talking like. You know, an inch and a half, one of those big photo album things. Of everyone's pieces all the time? Um, it was mostly um, bombing on the Northerns really? because they went through the whole album, turning, do you recognise this? Do you recognise this? And I was obviously just like, no, 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 no. But at the same time, <laughs> I was quite intrigued to look at the pictures. <laughs> Let's see about the pictures very quickly. Yeah. Side note in here. Tell me about the book and the pictures. So what we look, what we looking at? Are we looking at like an A4 book or is this like some sort of like, you know, intermediate arts and design course style book? That no, you know those you old albums with this um, sort of uh, see-through plastic sheet that hold the, the photos are stuck in? Yeah. Real old looking. Yeah. Um, but just, I just remember... I, st- I would love to have had a copy of that. How many uh, pages was it? Oh, loads. It was thick. Thick. Yeah, yeah. What, it, what, it biblical wasn't, it wasn't, proportion. It wasn't just me, but the, the writers I was with that night, their stuff was in there as well. Um, uh, but I thought to myself, I don't want to sit here and start studying it too much because I'm, as far as I'm concerned, I was having a piss in an alley. Yeah. My mum was more intrigued. She wanted to have a look. My mum's like <laughs> super cool. Mum, stop it, mum. <laughs> you know, she. I spoke. Well, I speak to my mum a lot, and you know, and talk about you know the different eras of my life and everything. And I said, and I've asked her, you know, how did you feel when I was doing graph and all of that? And um, she said, look, I didn't try to stop you. I knew what you were doing, but you had to do it. And that's how my mum. She's that kind of person. Very Obviously, cool. Obviously, she was wary. Mm. She didn't really know the full ins and outs of what we were getting up to because if I t- if I told her that, then there'd be trouble. Yeah, you, wouldn't, yeah. She, you know, mum doesn't need to know all of that. But yeah, she she, I think she quite enjoyed looking at the pictures. To, to be honest, she's 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 she's, she's always been on my side, and she you know so. Did your yeah. mum and dad were they together at the time? Yeah, yeah. My yeah. mum and dad come to what London. Did pops think about it. My dad's a bit straighter, admittedly. Um, but he's cool as well. They could, they both come to London when they were about 17, 18. Um, my mum's from Birmingham. Uh, my dad's uh, originally from Scotland, um, but he was living um, down in Surrey. Mm. And they come to London um, late 60s. Um, and they've been together ever since. Fantastic. You know, so I've, I've always had a good grounding um, uh, from them. And, Not and, a parental one, you understand? And as kid, we're talking about... You're grounded as in a as in a person. Well, they brought yeah, they brought me up. You know, uh, as a young kid, they set things in me from a young age um, that I lost them for a while, but I had them to go back to um, after that. What you know, just how to be a good person. You know, you know, um, they yeah, it was just a, a real healthy upbringing my mum looked after me and my brothers my dad went to work um it wasn't you know we didn't we, they weren't rich or anything like that but at the same time we were rich mm. with the important stuff 
you know, my mum would always be taking me and would take me and my brothers to the park every night after school. And that's how, you know, and I had a lot of friends, very... All our friends weren't English, it was, you know, even though, like, born in London and, you know, that sort of thing. The majority of my friends when I was younger weren't. They were... They were it, but we never thought about it. You're lucky, man. It was, uh, lucky, you know... Lucky. It, all the, Back then it was... It was obviously there was a lot of white people, um, but like I say, my friends, I had a um, Asian friend, a Turkish friend, um, who who I was really tight with, you know. Um, so that you know that it was a it was a real healthy upbringing. We we weren't brought up, you know, in in to see ourselves different from other people or anything mm. like that. And it was good to have that to go back to later. Um, well, Graf was like that as well, because Graf was, it wasn't about um, where you were from, although some people made it a bit of an issue. We were all writers and, mm. and that was it, you know. It doesn't matter what you look like. Some of us, you know, the, it was all sorts of characters, all sorts back then. So when you're looking at this book and the feds are there over mm. you and your mum's having a gander and you're in that zone of like, well, I'm not going to even blink to even give them the idea that I even know what's going on in this book mm. right now. How did you get out of it? Mum, back off, back well, off, mum. Well, no, they, <laughs> it, it, they, it was just going nowhere because I was just, it was just no comment. And, and they get to a point where they know it's just not, there's no point in asking any more questions. I got charged. Did you? Okay. Yeah, yeah. How many times have you been in jail? Been... Well, how many times have you been caught? Not jail. How, how many times have you been... What, for Graf? Yeah. That was the once. Just the once, uh, yeah. I'd, be, I'd, been, I'd been arrested for things, mm. but no, not charged. Mm. There was no real evidence. I got, I got someone grasped me up. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's a girl grasped me up because their school got bombed. And I knew who did it. I didn't do it. Mm. And the police come to my house because the girl said, oh, he does graffiti, so oh, it must shit. be him. And I was like, I remember they come round, it was like, I can't believe this. And um, when they say, where were you on so-and-so night? And you know when you're like, I've got no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How am I going to remember that? And um, anyway, I've, I'm pretty sure I was. I, I said I was, was at home that night. And um, they had they had no evidence. It was just b based purely on that. And I remember seeing the girl after, and um, she's like trying to apologise to me. And I was just like, I've got nothing to say to you. Yeah. Did you know her well anyway? Was, yeah, she lived around the corner from me. I was just like, it was bloody liberty. Yeah, it's a liberty. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, and there was another time as well where it was Christmas time, and um, I wanted to go out on Boxing Day. Christmas Day, nothing's happening. As you do, yeah. So I went out, wanted to go out on Boxing Day and um, thought I'm going to go out to Moorgate, see what's happening. And uh, there happened to be a particular train on the platform there with a, a rather lengthy piece on it. Um, and I was like, oh, man, wicked. I'm glad to see that. It's just, just sitting there. And uh, me being my inquisitive self... Um, decided to, well, what's on the other side of the train? <laughs> I mean, who would know? You have to go and have a look. Um, you're just typical me. Yeah, that, you know, one, yeah, what's on the other side? And um, <laughs> I walked round and there was nothing on the other side and I'm walking back down the platform and the next thing there's police walking towards me and I'm like, are you serious? And there's an LT man as well and they're like, what are you doing? And, and, and I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything, I'm... Just walk round to this platform. Well, we're taking you down to the station. I'm like, oh. What well, they take? On what grounds they take you to the station? Criminal damage, because there was all graffiti on the train. Simpl simple. Simple. Who year as was that. this? When was this? This was Christmas. This was. Um, this was the uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, priest I know. That was done. And uh, so I went to the police station. And uh, they had nothing to charge me with. And I was I was really pissed off, man. Like, yeah. I had a pen on me as well. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, that's not doing me any favours. So we got to the police station. I said, oh, do you mind if I just go to the toilet? And uh, they're like, no, go on. And I got to the toilet and I just had a little, like, stubby pen on me. It's like a homemade thing. So I made sure that was... 
empty. properly tucked away. No, I couldn't. There was nowhere to get rid of it in the toilet. Yeah. They even had like a grill where the piss is supposed to run down. Can you open up the ink and just so it's empty? So no, I no I just it was cool. It was only small, so I, put, I just uh, sat there and um, they phoned my dad. And all I remember thinking was, my dad was going to be really pissed off, man. It's his boxing day. <laughs> so he came, yeah, he came and picked me up from this police station and there wasn't a lot of conversation, I have to admit, in the car on the way back. <laughs> but you didn't do nothing. Well, you, my mum said, she goes, I knew you weren't doing anything. And I was like, well, why? She goes, you were in your best clothes. You just got some yeah, new clothes yeah, yeah, for, yeah, good. for Christmas. And it was very like, good. you wouldn't go out in yeah. those. And it was like, no, I wouldn't. I, I, I had some black jeans on, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, they're, they're set to go grey on the first of yeah. outing of going out uh. and so yeah ju just to add to that story so anyway so i was in the holding cells while they while they um got my dad to come up and um 20 odd years later i had to go to that police station not for any not not for anything that i'd done mm. it was just there was a particular reason i had to go there and um there were some papers that needed addressing whatever and um i got chatting to the woman in there that I'd, I'd had to go and see. And um, I was cracking a couple of jokes, quite, you know, quite a friendly person. Yes, you do. Not so much when I was younger, but <laughs> I'd got to a point where I realised that actually there's no harm in talking yeah. to people. That's too short and all that. Yeah, and um, she turns around and goes, do you want to have a tour of the police station? Stop it! And this is the very police station I was in, and I was like, yeah, why not? And... Um, so she, we went for a walk round in then, and uh, she goes, do you want to see the holding cells? And I was like, yeah, why not? Let's have a see what all this is about. Yeah, Play, yeah, yeah, yeah. Playing, you know, goody yeah. two-shoes and all of that. <laughs> and I, so I had a good snigger to myself <laughs> um, looking at the holding cells and reminiscing about yeah. being in there. But, yeah. Were there tags in there since then? No, I didn't walk. I didn't go yeah, into it, to say. be honest. I just stood at the door and was like, oh, I do, yeah, the bloody holding cells. Ugh. They look horrible. Yeah, they're grim, man. If you if you got to spend a bit of time in there, I've spe I have spent some time in those, and uh, I got to the point where I'd got used to being in them. That I'd go in there and um, I'd just like take off my clothes, fold them up in a nice pile, and just lie down on the. Well, some of them didn't even have mattresses, and just lie down and just think, right, just well, I just got to chill for a bit. How long's a bit in a holding cell? Well, it depends. A day? It, it, well, I be, I, I think the longest was when I had to... They held me in because I had caught on the Monday... They, I had caught on the Monday morning, had some mates on remand, and um, they were bringing them from Feltham, and um, we were all up for the same thing. I'd managed to stay out of it and not get caught, but in the end, they were coming around my house, and I thought, oh, there's no... I'm just going to have to go to the police station. Went to the police station... I, th uh, I think it was on, um, was it a Friday or Saturday? Mm. One of them anyway. And I had to stay in there till the Monday. Fuck. Yeah. Hell. Bloody Libby's. Yeah. And um, I just thought, well, I'll, all my mates were in Feltham, so there's only one place I'm going. I'm going mm. back with them. Yeah, yeah. And um, saw them in the cells under the court and um, got, the, got an absolute touch, got up into court and... Um, They've said, yeah, you're going to have to sign on at the police station twice a week. And I was like, oh, my God. My mum was at court. A couple of other people I knew as well. And, um, yeah, for six months I had to sign on every Wednesday and Saturday. It was an absolute nightmare. I used to forget to do it. Um, and it got, and go into panic mode because you had to sign on at a certain time. Rush to the police station. and yeah. oh, that's a headache, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, luckily enough... Um, I managed to get out, get off, and um, we had the court case and everything. A couple of my mates went down for it and served a bit of time, and um, I didn't, and a couple of others. And uh, yeah, I kind of like, mm, yeah, I'm not really feeling this lifestyle too much. Yeah, because it's just it repeat, was just, repeat, repeat, yeah, repeat all it was the time. Just, just living on the edge the whole time. It was just a really ner nerve wracking, to be honest. And it was, and Graf was like that as well. Mm. When I was writing, it was just there was a nervous tension to it of not wanting to get caught, 
not wanting to bump into certain people as well because there was an element of there 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 was a kind of a bullying mentality with some people mm. it didn't really happen to me you know any major event i had a couple of altercations um where i got the blame for something that i didn't do mm. um but for whatever reason they thought it was me and i took a took a punch in the eye for it and got a naughty black eye mm. um but it kind of came with the territory, yeah. to be honest. It's like that that kind of thing was happening. I, I, I'd seen it happen to other people. Um, so I kind of rode with it a bit. It, it, was, it was upsetting. I didn't enjoy it. Mm. Um, or, you know, who does want to get a punch in the eye? No. But I was a little kid and there wasn't much I could do about it. And, um, yeah, like I say, it was, it was just one of those things. Surely there's like, after a while, it's like you start rattling. There must be some sort of like... I don't know, disharmony in you. That, that, that feeling of like a bit of a cross to burn moving forward into your life. That's quite, quite, quite an emotional thing to carry, isn't it? Yeah, I think um, I met a guy years ago in Cuba, ex-soldier, um, got on really well with him. Yeah. And uh, he made the point of saying to me, you're going to be haunted by ghosts. And I was like... Hmm. Hold on, haunted by a ghost, what do you mean? What? Well, I didn't really know what he meant at the time. It was only later when I was doing, like, reflecting on my life and, and really going deep on everything that I'd done that I could, I felt was still with me and I hadn't let go of emotionally. And it, it soon became apparent that, yeah, he was, he was talking about ghosts, not external ghosts, my ghosts. Things the, that you've done in your the past. The ghosts of my past would come back and haunt me. And, um, yeah, they did. And um, it was hard for me to have to take responsibility. There were things I did that I kind of blanked out a bit. Give me an example of something that you did that as a, as a, as a anchor to this kind of, this kind of cross to bear. Like, what, what, have you, what did you do that was... Well, I, what have you done? I wasn't always the nicest person, that's for sure. Um, just, yeah, various things. But I don't think I need to say I'm on camera and be specific about it, but I wasn't a nice person for a while. So I had a lot of stuff from that angle that I needed to resolve personally where I accept myself as the person I was back then, but not the person I am now. Hmm. Um, so, you know, people, people will think of me perhaps, you know, having been away for so long that I'm still that same person that I was back then. Mm. I might have done something to them. I don't know. Outside of graph, but I hope they can understand that I'm not that person now. Mm. And I, and I, and I, I'm quite happy to apologize. You know, if someone says they've got beef, I'll apologize, you know, <laughs> but at the same time. I'm not that person anymore. Mm. You know, I'm I'm the person I am now. Mm. You know, so had a had a tough time with it. Dealing with all of that. Um but it's made me who I am now and I'm happy with that because that 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 was such a key part for me of of tr just trying to understand who I am and uh deal with all of this baggage because I I could feel the heaviness of it and um I had like quite a, I had a, like a pain in my chest for right. a while, and um, it, was, it wasn't like a, a, a physical pain. It was more of an emotional pain, and I'm, I was well versed enough to know what was going on. But at the same time, I didn't really know how I was going to get rid of it because I thought that I, I thought I dealt with it all, <laughs> and. Um, Obviously hadn't because I still had the pain. And um, I think probably at this point as well, it'd be good for me to just mention a little a little part of the graph. Yeah. Just keep it on the graph as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the mental health thing. Yeah, yeah. Of being on a train. Used to go bombing a lot on my own. Preferred being on my own a lot of the time as well. It was just, yeah, just... I just felt, you know, more in control 
and not having to concern myself with what other people were doing. Mm. Um, so anyway, I was out on the train, in between Golders and Hampstead. Hampstead's deepest station on the underground, I think, pretty sure. Mm -hmm. And um, what I used to do was go between Golders and Hampstead and just batter the inside, yeah. like as hard as I could. It's quite a long stop as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, this particular time, I I was like, I'm, I really want to batter these trains. I mm -hmm. want I want people to get on the train and 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 see it's battered. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm just going to start colouring in fro-ups in, in the inside. Colouring in fro-ups. Yeah, just, there was enough time to Brazen. do it. My fro-up was quick. <laughs> On the end of the um, carriage. Anyway, so I, I was doing that and the train stopped in the tunnel and um, the driver starts walking through and I'm looking, I'm in second or third carriage, never went in the front carriage, always stayed away from the front carriage. The driver had a peephole. So... Didn't want him looking through mm. that peephole. A few, few carriages down, he's not going to see it. Anyway, he's come into the carriage. He's like, yeah, I've seen what you've done. The call's going through. Police are going to be waiting at the next station. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hmm. First thing, first thought, get rid of whatever I've got on me. Cans out the window. Pens mm. out the window. And uh, he, he's like, I'm just going to mark the spot. It's very, very matter of fact as well. Mm. I'm just going to mark the spot. Where, where we are now, and they can come back and get those as evidence. Jesus. So I'm like, oh, mm. great. Mm. What am I going to do, man? <laughs> no, no, yeah, <laughs> what am I going to do? And um, he goes, right, you come in the front cabin with me, and when we get to the next station, blah, 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 they'll be waiting for you. So I've gone in the front of the train, never been in one before, so that was quite <laughs> surreal, actually being seeing the tunnel head on coming and out I, and yeah and I was yeah. I was soaking it up I have to admit because it was like oh this is what it's like being a driver yeah, what yeah, they yeah. see <laughs> you know and then you see the light of the station coming towards you and um I didn't really know what to do and I wasn't thinking too hard well, about could what, you do yeah it was, I was stuck stuck in there and bearing in mind I'm we're we're inside now we're not on and the outside like the, when you from Golders onwards, where you're outdoors, mm. we're, we're in inside the line, and um, so I'm standing there, coming into Hampstead, platforms on the right, drivers on the left, still soaking it up. Wow, this is an amazing view. Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? Kind of half expecting the, to see the police on the platform. So while I'm standing there. I heard this voice coming from somewhere mm. that just said, just jump. Simple as that. Quite strong. Not like, you know, when someone s says something like, do that. Yeah. Enough that you, it's like, yeah, well, you're doing it. Kind of like, you, I can't put it in any other way than just simply hearing those simple words of just jump. And as we came into the platform, there's a side door on the old stock. I opened the side door yeah. and just jumped out onto the platform. <sighs> Train's still moving quite fast. I'm rolling all over the floor. There's people screaming on the platform. They're thinking I've fallen out the train. I'm trying to get on my what? feet. It, it's, it's, there's a bit of a pandemonium going on, <laughs> you know. Um, and all I'm thinking, I've got to get out of Hell. here. I've got to get out of yeah. here. Start running. There's a lift and there's a stairway. I'm straight away, I'm not getting in the lift because I'm stuck there and it's like a cage. So I'm just going to take the stairs and I'm running up the stairs and it's never ending at Hampstead. It's, it is Deep, hard yeah. work and running as well. Yeah. Adrenaline is like pumping But you're busted. Me. Well, all the way there, all the way running, I'm thinking they're just going to be waiting for me at the end, at the top. What's the point of even running? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah, what is the point? But at the same time, I kind of tell my kids this: just don't give up, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? You don't know what's going to happen. Don't you know? Don't try and preempt things in life, because just, you know people want that control mm -hmm. of not wanting to know what's going to happen next, and. 
half the, more than half the time it doesn't happen that way, no, particularly with a fear mindset as well. Yeah. You know, you always think worst I'm the worst case for that. Scenario, always right? were, yeah. So I get to the top, turn the corner, and you can't see my face, but I'm yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, squinting yeah. a little bit it's now. The squint like, of, what, what's gonna be, yeah. be waiting for me? And there was not a soul there. Wow. Not even no guards, nothing. No police. No um passengers or whatever. Get the fuck out of here. So I'm I'm straight out of the station, run yeah. up the hill, couple of side roads, straight in the bush. It was early evening, it was already turning dark, and I just jumped in a massive bush and just thought, well, I'm I'm staying here for the minute. And and at that point I could hear bear sirens. Mm. Whether they were for me or not, I don't know. I think they probably were, because the driver must have put the call through yeah. before he'd come through because that's what he said he'd done. Yeah. And um, so I just waited there and, and it got dark pretty quick and I slipped up the road to Whitestone Pond where the, uh, the buses were, jumped on a bus down to Golders and went home. Voices in your head. Well, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Story. I never thought about it at the time. I never thought about it. Has it always been like this psychological... Like, fight in your head? I've had moments in my life. There's a, just as a quick one, I got caught racking one time. And um, the guy, I couldn't, I couldn't get away from him. The geese was massive. And he, and he proper pulled me in back into the shop. And uh, they took me into the back office. And the manager came out and he was like, yeah, calling the police, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay. Not particularly happy about the situation. Um... I couldn't get out of there, and uh, the phone rang. The manager picks up the phone, starts talking, goes out the room. I'm trying to think of, like the specific whether uh, whether he finished mm. on the phone or took the call on on in the other room. But the phone rang. I heard the phone ring anyway. He comes back in the room and goes, "Get out of here now." And I was just like, oui. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. Whether that phone call was in it, who, I, I, who knows? I, I, I doubt it. But little episodes like that, that I never really thought about too much. Um, but at the time, yeah, I was extremely grateful because I just didn't want to get nicked. Mm. More than that. that to me was a massive part. And do not get nicked doing graft. Do everything you can not to get nicked. Let's go back to the, um, let's go back to the on the floor chest pain yeah yeah like so you were ill oh yeah i was in a, i was like proper mash up uh mentally how did it get to that point how did you get to the point where you were on the floor i like, was completely pain? disillusioned with life i i think um, i can't be more honest than that i was not getting it enough from life itself but I wanted to take responsibility for that as well. And um, I'd put myself... Ba I'd, where I was saying the pain in my chest, it was it was an emotional pain. Mm. And um, I'd been studying and had, had implemented various things into my life, to, you know, to uh, to navigate life. Mm. But I need... But this was another thing I... That, what am I going to... How am I, I going to deal with this? Mm. Um so I started, I tried a few things um, and what had got me into that situation was where I had put myself into like a, a kind of state of meditation. Right. Um, where going back to like the, you know, the whole graph thing, when you're, when, when you're a kid doing graph, you, you live in the moment. Mm. That's it. There's no thinking about what you're yeah, going to yeah, do yeah. tomorrow because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I put myself in into this mindset where I stayed in control of my mind to not allow it to drift into thinking, mm. just absorbing exactly what was happening at that at that moment. Mm. But I don't know. I probably was a slight was naive with it as well. I didn't appreciate that I was opening doors to other realms at the same mm -hmm. time um but it was it, it, to describe it I would, I would say i was pretty much in a, in a in an ecstatic state for, for two weeks the equivalent of taking a pill 
And when you get the rush up your spine for two weeks. Two? Yeah. Two weeks? Yeah. Cons- yeah. Every day? And I was having to hold it down as well. At work? Go to work and try and be cool. And mad, sh- mad stuff was going on as well. Like bizarre stuff was going on at that uh, during that two weeks. Like, um, yeah, I, it's, I could go on and yeah, on yeah, about yeah. it, but it, there was a lot of bizarre, like, things that would be hard to explain. Um, so what's going on in your head with, with just more internally? What, what, were, what was breaking down that was leading My you? My whole thought process was, was, was fried. Oh. Where, so to explain it, to try and get an, un, you know, an understanding... Um, where we, we, you know, our thoughts tend to be images and words. Um, but what was happening was the the word where I was thinking my thought, my, where I was thinking my thoughts were becoming so entangled that where you would differentiate between each word mm. to string the sentence, that wasn't happening. <sighs> The word would lead into the other word, so that like end- a really bad hashtag. <laughs> exactly. So let's let's just say, you say a word, yeah. any word you want. Um, agree. Okay. So the first word is agree, and the end letter is an e. So it will just that next word would start there. So it would go, agree, elephant, tangent, Toblerone, ecstasy. Yellow. So it would be but the start. Not, oh my but God, at a hundred wow. miles an hour. Yeah. And I couldn't find the break either. So when you you know, it was a real head fuck for me. Yeah. I, and I was like, oh man, I, I you know I, I don't know if I can handle this. This is is this going to stop? And you're going to work like sti- that? And I'm still trying to live my life as well, and and stay focused and not and and not lose it. And um, yeah, I did. I did lose it because I, my wife was like, "You, you gotta go to the hospital. You need to see someone, man, because you, you are behaving really irrationally." And um, I was behaving really irrationally. I was. There were things like just, just quickly, where I saw um, one of my nephews, and I was having to deal with past lives at the same time, emotions from past lives, and I knew my nephew from a past mm, life mm. and we'd had an arrangement that if we could prove to each other that there was such a thing as past lives that we had to have a code to try and break what? whatever was going on. So I'm chatting to my nephew and I'm getting all of this going on in my head and all I'm hearing, yeah, you, you break the glass, break the glass, break the glass. I'm just getting this, break the glass. I just picked up the glass and mashed it off the wall. Thinking he's going to clock. He's going to know now. He's going to know that we've met up in another life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just looked at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, um... Hello. <laughs> yeah, uh, like, and this, and so obviously it was... What do you think get, I'm doing? It, it I'm was, doing what we said we were going to do. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know m- made total sense to me. Yeah. And my wife's like, yeah, you got to go to hospital. So we went to hospital. Uh, this was on Boxing Day. And... Um, Got there and started talking to the doctor. And he's like, "Yeah, we got to give you an in- injection to calm you down." I'm like, "No, I'm not having an injection." Blah de blah. They're like, "Well, you got- anyway." So I just decided I'm getting up and getting out of here. And I and I was I was hearing things in my head as well, like voices telling yeah. me this, telling me that. And I di- and I did go on a bit of a mad rampage uh, without needing to go into full details. Nobody got hurt. There's no, you know, there was no. Nothing violent towards people. There was violent behaviour, but not to any individual person. Anyway, the police came and they took me outside. And while they was taking me outside, I took my phone out, took the chip out, ate the chip, and I'm like, "You're not. Chi- I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to chip us and blah blah blah." And you, you know, and they'd already tried to inject me with I don't know what. And um, we're standing outside and waiting for the police van to come. And then one of the police officers decides it's 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 going to be fun to smash me in my face, basically, like the proper punch, bam, right in my face. And I wasn't really no f- no warning, just no warning, nothing. You didn't just, do anything that was no, I didn't. It wasn't warranted. 
it wasn't warranted. Yeah, I've, I've been an idiot, but a punch in the face. So long. Really? And, um, but I was charged. And I just, I took the punch and just looked at him and gave him a smile. It was just like... You're not going to get being, me. You, you, it was like I was living... I'd, I've, I've already died. Your, your punch is like... It didn't mean anything to me. It was, it was, it, there was an element of humour to it for me because it's like I've been, I was having to deal with past lives at the time. Whether people believe it or not, all I can say is I had to deal with the emotion of past mm -hmm. lives. Particularly what I was dealing with at that moment was that I'd been sent to war by my mum, gone to war, got killed and hadn't come back. And I'm not, I'm not talking about specific, I was, you know, like, oh, yeah, I, it was this war during no, no, this period, yeah. but it was the emotion of it. And, um, yeah, it's it, 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 it was really hard for me. But at the same time, it was like, I'm still alive, man. Mm. I'm not dead. Mm. I'm alive. You know, mm. it's like, wow, this is, you know, it was mad. Real... Monumental moment in my life that I just, you know, it was a key part for me as well. As, as, as mad as it was, it mm. was it was necessary. Um, I got got taken to the police station, um, put in a cell. Thing is, I didn't see you. I couldn't see you as a human being. I was seeing your personality, and it was mm. a little bit scary mm. because most people tend to think to them that they're good people mm. and they can portray that image. I could just see straight through all of that. Mm. So I knew straight away who was a good person who was a bad person. Mm -hmm. I just look at you, and that was really scary for me because it was like... Just I see could, straight through the poofles. You could, you, you, it's almost like seeing their emotions mm. and, and who they really are. Like they live beyond, kind of shit. Yeah, like beyond the physical. Um, and... Um, Anyway, this, this doctors turned up and uh, I, can't, I didn't want to look at anyone in the face because I didn't like what I could see. It was quite, quite upsetting. But this doctor's looked at me and um, I've, I've looked up at him and I just saw death. I didn't, I had, I hadn't seen any of that in anyone else. Mm. But this guy, I knew this guy was n not a good guy. Mm. And he's like, well, I'm going to give you an injection now. And I was like, no, you're not giving me any injections. I'm not having an injection. He's like, well, and the police and they're all like, well, you're, you're, you'll get section then. Like almost like, you know, like a kind of the consequence kind of thing. And mm. I'm like, well, I'll get section then. I said, but I'm going to tell you now, if you try and inject me, I'm not taking responsibility for my actions from that point because of what you've done to me. So I'm leaving it there. <laughs> and I think they kind of expected me to take the injection and I was just like, no, I'm not taking it. No. It's just not happening. I just, I didn't know what, I didn't even know what, I don't know what's in it. No, no, no. They're telling me, well, the presumption is going to calm me down. I don't know that. I don't, the state I'm in, I don't know how that's yeah, going to yeah, react. Yeah. Anyway, so I got sectioned. But on the, before that, I had to do, um, I had to be interviewed as well. And um, some guy came down because I was older. You need like so in, when you're in that kind of state, they wanted somebody, somebody there mm. in the interview. And this guy turned up. I, couldn't, I refused to look at anybody in the face at that point. I just didn't want to see them. It was, it was, it was, it was an element of scariness to it. Mm. And this guy's turned up and he's, uh, we have a little chat. And I, and I tell him what's going on. I thought, I'm just going to have to be honest with this guy and kind of trust him a bit. Mm. He's here to obviously help me. Um, and he goes, look, he goes, when we go in there, he goes, I, I'm going to cross my legs when it means no, when you answer no, and uncross them when it's yes. So I just sat there, watched him do it, answered the questions. It's fucking genius. It was mad. <laughs> I never saw this guy's face. I don't even know. I don't know what he looked like. He's an Australian guy. So you just, you just didn't. I, I, I couldn't look at anything. He's like your um, Ziggy from uh, yeah, Quantum yeah. Leap. What, the uh, little <laughs> yeah, box yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. He's like, there you go. Do yeah. that. Do this. See you on the other side. Yeah. And um, wow. 
so yeah, I got the, they took me to the psychiatric unit, kept me in there. The doctors and that had a chat with me. That was really uncomfortable because, like I say, I couldn't see you physically so well. I, was, I couldn't differentiate mm. between a man and woman. Mm. I didn't know if you were a man or a woman. I couldn't tell. It was almost like I could see um, their other characters. Yeah, yeah, it's they live. It's that they live shit. Yeah. And um, it was... I spoke to that, to that particular doctor... A couple of days later, and, and was quite apologetic to her as well because really? because she, yeah, she's a really attractive woman, and I said, and I was saying to her, I can't tell if you're a man or a woman, you know, and it was, oh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. could tell she, it's she to give a personal you know, complex. You know, like, <laughs> that, that, that's not going to go down too well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we had we got on really well. I'd calmed down by that stage and um, knew I had to get out of there, man. I didn't want to stay in there. there was, the assumption being I'm going to be in there for 28 days. I'm not being in there for 28 days. I'm looking at the people in there. And I'm yeah. like, I'm, I've got to get out. I've of got there. to get out, man. I, I, you know, th this is, I'm taking responsibility. So you played to their rules, and you, yeah, I had to. You I just, had to take a couple take? of tablets. Three days. Three. Oh, that's three, good. Da three days before when they let me out on the little day trip, just to see if I was okay. And then they said I could go home and stay at home one night. And it, my, it, it was awkward, you know. And I really feel for my wife because it was very out of character for mm. me to behave in that way. Um, but I I sat down and explained everything and I said, look, I'm getting better now. I'm t I'm in control now. I know what's going on. I can deal with it. Bear with me. I'll be better for it. Mm. And, and I'd like to think I am better for it because I took responsibility um, rather than trying to blame people, mm. play the blame game, you know? Mm. Um, own your pain, innit? Own yeah, it. I wanted... I, you know, There's people there to help, but own your pain. It's typical of me to dive in rather than go baby steps. Mm. Just typical. I've done it in too many things in my life where the eagerness to learn, mm. I, I want to know now, yeah. you know, what's this about? And uh, that's, yeah, that's just that's just typical of me. So it was... Wow. It was, it was, it was a mad moment to think in that my you life. Were, you were sectioned and... I don't know. I, I just feel so, he's self medicating at the end of the day. You, you had a the, the 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 guy on holiday was right. There was oh, massively right. It was yeah. pain. Uh, perhaps he'd been through it. You see, yeah. I don't know. We didn't. We we weren't together long enough, and I wasn't on that frequency then hmm. to probably appreciate what he was saying. He hmm. could have, you know, you for myself. You know, I've spoke to people. Listen to what they said, and, it, and it's not till five years later it's suddenly like, fuck, yeah, he told me that. And, mm. I, and I just, it just went straight over my head. Like, and reminding yourself now of the jump, jump scenario and yeah, all the these voices, different things that the voices play of, across the hearing voices yeah. that, um, yeah, point towards so, there's something else to this life, man. Do you think there's a, do you, I mean, with all of this aside, mm. that having a singular purpose in life. And being able to channel your energies, that's, like, so important. Like... I think it's the number one objective, yeah. personally. I don't know for... I'm not going to say for everyone else because, I think, you know, we're all on different journeys and we're all at different stages as well. Mm. So what, 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 what I've been through, you know, is, is my journey. Um, I see a lot of people struggling and it, and it, it used to be hard for me... Um, to cope with that. But having gone through what I went through, the pain in my chest went hmm. after that. The emotions that um, I felt were holding me back. Because I, because I think, you know, look, if I'm having to deal with I've been killed and, I, and, and it wasn't that issue, that wasn't the issue. The issue was I blamed my mum. And there was, it was, that was the emotion I was having to deal with. It was my mum's fault. Hmm. That was what was eating me up. And it, I, I obviously, it, it felt contained with me and I needed to deal with it and, hmm. and accept the situation, you know. And, uh, hmm. yeah, here, here I am now. I would, yeah. would like to help people, yeah. you know. But I, I'm well aware that not everyone wants help. 
You know, some people are happy not to have help. And if you want help, you got to ask for it. You can't yeah. just expect it. Yeah. You have to ask for these things. The universe it. is listening. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it may sound like I'm going off on a bit of a, a bit of a, a wooey one, but no, you've experienced this my, it. Yeah, this is my journey. It's down. And, and I would say that when I was on the floor, at that stage of being broken, that I got lifted off the floor mm. by something non-physical mm. that I can only describe as the hug from your grandparents. Mm. That's what I felt and that's what pulled me up and it was, it stayed with me ever since. It's not, it's, I can just think of that moment and just think, everything's all right, man. It's not, my, you know, just be cool. Mm. It's very easy to to pre try and preempt things of what's going to happen. Mm. That's the, you want to, there's a saying in Africa, Sankofa. And I was drawn to this symbol a year, years ago. And it's, it translate as, translate as, in order to look forward, one must return to the past. Mm. Quite fitting as and well. And what's it called? What's it called? Sankofa. Sankofa. It's, it, it's a bird. Yeah, yeah. With an egg on its back. Right. And uh, it's, it was very fitting for me as well to have these things, you know, to help me get through it because I knew I had to deal with my past to be able to clear the decks. And so Graf was a part of that as well. I had to, I had to deal with that because that was a... It was an amazing time. Amazing doesn't always have to mean, you know, good. Good, happy. You know, yeah. it was just an amazing time. You don't and regret any of it? I don't regret any of it. And if any of it, I chased that buzz for a while. And I, and I would like to say one thing. There's only... For all the times I tried to get that back in my life, that... that well, I'm just going to say the buzz, basically. Mm. I couldn't find it. And for people to kind of understand what graph meant to me as a kid, for me to experience that again, I did. But it was completely unexpected. It was when my uh, son was born. <laughs> that is the buzz. That's, uh, that's the only way I can describe it. I wow. never had that buzz until that specific moment when my son was born and I was there... And that's how I felt. And that's what Graf was like for me. Wow. That's, you know, she'd be like, really? Graf meant that much to you? Yeah, it really did. I absolutely, I absorbed it and absolutely loved it. And and people, so it, re it set, reset your life and responsibilities and, and mindset. Just the family lifestyle, the yeah, I th parenting. I think, no, I think what it was was, was, was understanding that... Um, it's all these, all this about you know what you've got, and mm. and, and what you know what is success and it means and nothing. Like, yeah, my it's interpretation of success, you know, would would quite simply be being an emotionally mature person mm. who you know is prepared to help other people. Mm. You know, who were going through tough times. Because we are going through tough times. This period now is tough. If, if you're listening, it's not 2020 something. It, this was a time of com complete and utter confusion in the world. Um, yeah, you, you, you've probably experienced it by now. Yeah, I think. Well, <laughs> I think we've always had it. Yeah. There's always been these these periods, you know. And this period now um, it, it is a big battle. You know, there are lots of small battles along along the way, but this is a big battle now, and. Uh, this, I think, why, when we was chatting earlier, before we started, you know, this whole thing with a lot of people getting very nostalgic mm. and reminiscing mm. about the past. Mm. I personally, after chatting with you know with people about this sort of thing, um, lean towards it's because we're not enjoying this period now, no. and it's, it's all uncertain. Yeah, and it's you. You can feel mm. that it's not right. That you know. I don't. I, I don't want to so go. I don't in go, the room, man. Well, I don't want to go off too much about it, you know, because it's. Yeah, it. I, I, 
it's a dark time. That's mm. what I'm going to say. It's a dark time. And, and many people have told me that. Many, you know, educated people in, in other realms have told me that it is. And um, you need to be very grounded now. You need to be in control of your of your whole thoughts and everything like that. That it's it's going to be vitally important. It is mm. vitally important anyway. But let's deal with it. To, you get, know? to get to where you are now, in the age you are and the experiences you've had, mm. you've got one hell of a level head on your shoulders, brother. <sighs> not always, though. You know, I, I'm happy with where I am. No, I'm not happy. I'm not going to use that word happy because I don't, I don't think it's the right word to use, I think, because what people think, you know, we, the, the battles that are going on between, you know, trying to reach happiness mm. you know and that sort of thing that that, that what do you I, I just want to be happy no, i don't want to be happy i know there's going to be i know i'm going to be happy at points mm. at the same time i know i'm going to be sad at points i could be really upset at points and mm. i could be really happy at some points but i want the middle ground i want to be content i want to be able to enjoy those moments and i want to be able to deal with those moments mm. on the other end of the scale. And I need to be in between the two. So I'm not chasing anything. I'm just content with how it is. And I don't know what's going to happen. Mm. I think it's, for me, that's that's an important thing. You just don't know what's going to happen. No. You just don't know. This, you know from I'm, one week to the next, from yeah, one well, day yeah, to the next. I just, you know, un the unexpected has a, Happens, isn't it? Mm. You know, and it's all part of a big, well, a big part of a tapestry. Yeah, it just keeps on mo yeah. moving. Yeah, I, I liken it to well, when I've spoken to people, and they're like, you know, what you you've you dis you decided to adopt this sort of journey to your life now of of trying to understand it, and you know, how do you feel you're doing, and you know, whereabouts do you think you are on it, and I. Uh, Obviously, I had to sit down and have a think because you want to try and explain these things mm. clearly. You know, I think it's important when we have these conversations that we don't get lost in in words that people don't understand. Mm. Words, you know, mm. strong strong things. Mm. <laughs> and, uh, mm. So, magic spells. Magic spells are words. That's you know they're powerful things. So I want to try and explain things in 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 a very simplistic way, um, and so. Using that sort of idea of you know magic spells and uh, what, what's important with them, and um, knowing that what you say can have a massive effect on people, so you do have to choose your words very, very wisely. As in, there would be spell. The words are the spells that they are spells. Drag people how, how into are, how are they not? How, well, you know, we talk about like well, you know magic spells, of, you know, like Harry Potter with yeah. a magic wand, and you know all of that sort of thing. But it's the word is a sorcery. Out, yeah, it comes out your. You, it's, well, you gotta be careful, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. You can scare people. You, you can, can create direct you know, them into a whole different world yeah, of thinking. Yeah. Manipulate people, We're and they'll think it. that it's natural. It's spirit. They've yeah. become spiritualized in the mm. fact that someone's told them something yeah. that factual. But that's just that's just that's just your input into what would be mediocrity, and and that just one morsel of thing could have someone going off on a complete tangent. Yeah, I mean, we, 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 as an example, you know, with words, you know, that certain words um, like the what do you see? see with yeah you know your eye yeah. the pupil and what is a pupil well the pupil's the student and so if you want to learn and you and you see yeah. so i don't like the whole the whole woke thing mm. it, it's the terminology i'm, I'm you know the, the word itself woke to me conjures up is um the the past yeah. past, woke. The, past tense, past tense. Yeah. i would rather be awake Mm. And and seeing what's going on now, and and you and so using my eye, which is the pupil, but the pupil is the student, mm. and not thinking that you know it all, and you know because how can we ever know it all? There's so much to learn in life, yeah. you know, and 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 that's, always be the student. Always. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> always. You know, the teacher should always be the student too. I've I've learned so much from people that um, I wouldn't have thought that I'd be able to. People, you know have just come out and, and said it might just be a, a sentence and, I, and I, 
I try and pay attention. I, sort mm. of, I try and pay attention of what's going on during the day and everything that I'm doing because I want to go to bed and I don't want to have to go to bed and think, oh, why did you do that? Oh, you idiot. Or, you know, mm. that kind of, I, I don't want baggage. I want to be light on my feet. I want to be light inside. And, I, and I, Yeah, just as simple as that. And so I try and deal with everything as it's happening paying attention to to what other people are saying, listening. I never used to listen to people. My mum drilled it in my head from day one. Patience is a virtue. I didn't know that she was what she was saying was <laughs> you're impatient. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, it, and it only clicked later where I was like, oh, yeah, mum, you're telling me that for a reason, yeah? Mm-hmm. So, so I, I thought, okay, let's try and be patient. Um, and I do try to do that. And, and and listen to what other people are saying. And so going back to what I was saying about, you know, what what is it like living that kind of life? Because, you know, I get on with my day-to-day stuff. I'm not sitting on some cave, you know, with my legs crossed mm-hmm. and all of that. I'm not, I'm hiding from it if I do that. I need mm-hmm. to... I'm, Face I'm it. part of this, you know, and, mm-hmm. I, and I want to live my life, but I want to be able to navigate it as well. And so when somebody said that to me, I was like, it was kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. And as you're going along, certain things happening, and those those things happening are, are the pieces in the puzzle. And so you're putting it together, and, you know, like, the obvious thing when you're making a jigsaw is to look for the sides and the corners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there ain't any sides or corners. Keys on, it just keys keeps on. growing and growing and growing. And that's how it is. And uh, I love it. I love life now. You know, I... I can't say any more than that. I just, I embrace it. Every, everything it has to offer. You know what I love about these podcasts is like, Graf is just the, the it, Graf is the, the sign on the door. Yeah. But there's lives within these, these cans and there's life within these writers. Mm. And just to have a conversation with you about it, I really appreciate. And, and we, we've gone into some subjects here yeah. that has never been touched on um on, on on podcast before yeah well i think it was awkward for me because i didn't know whether i really wanted to do this i'm i have not had anything to do with graph i've i've it was something that happened but i've done other things since but for whatever reason it's come back round a little bit and um it certainly has for you yeah I, I i still find it a little bit weird because being being a kid i di- i didn't look at what i was doing I didn't sit there and think, yeah, there's my tag, there's my tag, there's my tag. I was always looking at, there's so-and-so's tag, there's so-and-so's tag. Not f- perhaps thinking Which so much. actually, we might just add while we've yeah. got the... Because there's some shout-outs here that I'd clocked. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's time to give these people yeah. that were doing their thing well, think, think, yeah. around that time a shout-out. Because I know there's some names that have barely got their he- heads up on here. Well, these, well, there's people who I started writing with. Well, Cade, obviously. Or Tuck Cade. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, we had a mad time. That's it. Have I mentioned uh, going to yards with him? Go for it. The Golders? No? No, go for okay, it. Okay, so, sorry, we have talked a fair bit, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of an overlap. <laughs> yeah, go on. And, um, yeah, so we went yards. Um, before we went, before we went yard, um, I'd done a piece with another mate at Golders. And there's a wall next to the guard hut where the yard is, and uh, we went there like two o'clock in the morning, and it was, it was really one of those, you know, like the tension. Mm. This, was, this was all very new to me, mm. especially going out in the middle of the night. And um, we done this piece saying UKB for UK bombers on the wall next to the guard hut. And when I think back, I, you know, because I, I haven't thought about these things for such a long time, and why we could have done it on a train. Why didn't you do it on a train? Because we didn't think about doing it on a train. Wasn't it hotter but, to do it on the? Yeah, <laughs> but it was. We were new to it. Oh, we didn't so it... actually realise that we could actually do it on a train, and the trains were there. But you thought the wall was a little bit more convenient. The wall was there, and we were like, "We'll do it on the wall." And we could hear the hear them in there making their tea and the tinkling of the spoon on the teacup. And we there. get back, th- yeah, we get back down and spray a bit more, and it was it was mad, um, or because there wasn't really that many people around our end who were doing graph. Well, the writers were all coming from south. Everything that we were seeing was coming from south. 
um, on, wow. the, on the train. So, you know, that um, people like, well, one of the names that stands out for me is Mag from Gangsters. It was a tag I remember seeing on the insides um, that really stood out for me. Mm-hmm. And there's writers from that period, you know, um, Lazy Lady. A lot of them come up to Golders one time and bombed all Golders. And I remember going up there and being like, well, who are all these people? Mm-hmm. I've seen their tanks on the trains mm-hmm. and a couple of stations, but what, what are they doing mm-hmm. up here? Anyway, so let me just think. Who, yeah. Uh, Get them there's, in. There's, what is, there's so many like names from back then. The, the particular people who looked after me, there was a, there was a riot, Ariane. Um, Otto Ariane. He's in WD. He really looked after me when I was young. Big up WD. Yeah, he looked He looked after me. He had a mate called Rudy as well. And, um, I, you know, the, I was ex- start, starting to explore and, and the people who were right in, in the area were names like, let's see, there was uh, Neil. He was in the crew Rebel Alliance. There was Capital 03. He <laughs> had a brother Rank. There was another Tonight. guy, Maruk. There was Alex. The other writers that I was starting to see, well, there was event around as well. And Cares. And I'm mentioning people that I knew. Yeah. Not so much people. There were writers that I didn't know, but that I, it, it's so many, man. Yeah. And, and then just, yeah, just I see respect. Sham on there as yeah, well. Sham, Sham. Sham. Car 138. Yeah, Car 138. Went to, went to his house and got introduced to all, all of them crew as well. Um, Bus and shoe two wow. and noise, um, chrome as well, and his chrome. brother her. I'll take noise D- DDS noise. No, noise. Uh, would it be no- noise two oh seven? Is he in DDS? There's, well, there's a couple of noises. I think there? that might be new. I'm talking mm. about when it was new wave arts. Mm, okay. So, okay. Um, Cliff, another one that I uh, spent a lot of time with. Sub, I went out a lot with. Oh, there's so many, man. Um, did I say Frey? No. Okay. Hold tight, Frey. All right, Frey. Um, keep. Mm, again. Great times with him, man. Great times. And we know you're out there listening, man. We know you're out um, there listening. Other faces, there was Net One, Diet. I used to see a lot of him as well. Diet. There was Pim 17. There was a, it was a SAS crew were quite... On it, particularly the Northern Line, Mess. I spent a lot of time with Mess. Had really good times with him out bombing. Um, yeah, there's, God, there's, just, there's just too many names, man, mm. like from back then that that really... Should get that shot. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I, it's hard for me to try and remember them all. I've tried to, I've tried to take notes and I'm looking through and I'm like... Carl, I told you, I Carl told ST, you. This was the this is the undisclosed documentation um, right here. Who else is who else is here that that doesn't really get mentioned? It's not. I think I mean everyone knows all the other writers. You know, um, mm. Chain spent, mm. spent a lot of time with Chain. Hold tight, Out Chain. Coming, like, wow. You know, yeah, which yeah. smashed in the yards. I have to say, he was he was ruthless, and and it was infectious. Really, being with him, yeah. Yeah, um, we got him on podcast. He's coming on. Yeah, yeah. get get him on, man, because he's gonna have some. He, you know, it's it's good to understand what it was like back then. Yeah, um, living on the line because we really did live on it. I've I spent so much time on it um, that I I just became part of it. It was just I'd get up, get dressed, and go. And, Jump on a bus and go and jump on a train. And talking of buses, when I when I was going to school, there was another writer that I, used to haunt me. Uh, time. He was all the thirteens. They, they used to run down um, through Swiss Cottage and all of that, hmm. and down to Aldwych. And he he always used to see his tag, and and it was things like that that kind of drove me on a bit, because I wanted, I wanted to be a bomber. You know, I mm-hmm. wanted oh, that that to me piecing was great. But I wanted to be a bomber. That was that's what it was all about for me. Was just a vandal, legendary anti system, anti system. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been listening to the amazing, the awesome, the Don Da Da Dapadan Can One Inside yeah, the you, you can just dig 
ignore all of that because I know he likes to do that. Come but on. Yeah, I'm just another writer from the 80s and I, don't, and, I, and, and, I, and I like it that way. That's why it was awkward for me to come on because I don't see anything other than, you know, we, we've all got stories, man. And I think, you know, that you, you, stories are what it's about life and, and listening to stories because there's something about them. And mm. it's almost like, you know, you can, you can imagine before all of this, you know, digital era and, bef you know, before things were um, more industrialised, Sitting around the fire and you know, yeah, yeah, listening yeah, 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 to the yeah, yeah, stories, yeah, totally. it's just an amazing thing. This is where it's at, and this is, yeah, this it's is part just, of it. This is just my my story, and um, what a lovely yeah, way I've enjoyed it. having I've been enjoyed, I've enjoyed being able to to talk about these things because it's, it's a bit of a taboo subject for a lot of people, mm. and um, if, you know, it, it can be lonely as well. Mm. Um, and you're never you're alone. It. Whatever you're going through, you're never alone. No, and, and ask for help, man. Mm. Particularly if you, you know, don't wait until it gets it, the, it gets too hard and too heavy that way. Ask for help. There's there's no shame in it. Hundred percent. You know, just th th there's a lot of good people out there, man. There's a lot of good people who really want to, you know. But I think until somebody asks, you don't want to impose. Mm. And force yourself upon them, you know. Even though you can see they need help, they need to be at a place where they're ready. They're to. taking responsibility now, you know. And if you're out there listening, you know it's true. You know what yeah. to do. Yeah, simple as that. Can one, my thank brother. You. Yeah, thank you. Thank very you, much, man. my brother. I appreciate it. It's been. It's been. Uh, really? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, it has indeed. <laughs> Seriously, like blow my mind. I wasn't expecting it. I'm gonna be. Yeah, this is this is me for the for the for the rest of the week of the weekend. <laughs> full of musings and thoughts. Thank you for joining us, Killer Keller Podcast. Our like in was out of fashion. You know what to do. It's the sharing and caring game. We don't do it without you. You are you you are us, man. Um, don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Till next time. Peace. <laughs>